I'm going to have to try an, uh, another method, which I will demonstrate as follows. This distance here, that, that is a meter. If I asked you to imagine 10 of these in a row, just all lined up, I think most people could do it fairly well. It's about you know, the length across the front of this lecture theatre. Now, as we start piling on zeros, we can, we can keep up with this for a while. 10 of these, we're fine. 100 of these, I think most people have seen a football pitch. Um, 1,000 of these, that's a kilometre. That's maybe a bit hard to, to imagine 100 of these one after the other. But if I say, you know, go down to Mattingly Road and take a left and take the next left, and that's a kilometre, that's it's at least a distance we can get our head around. So, well, let's get a bit more ambitious. Let's go for three more zeros in this number. 1,000 kilometres which is the length of Great Britain. Do you really have an idea of how long a thousand kilometers? Can, can you imagine a million of these, just one after the other, heading all the way across Great Britain? I have to say, this is slightly easier for me, being Australian, coming from a bigger country. <laughs> I was once driving from Sydney to Brisbane, which is about a thousand kilometers, in fact, to a place just west of Brisbane called Toowoomba, try and spell it. Um, as there was a great moment in the trip. We'd been on the road for about 12 hours, and we finally saw a sign that said Toowoomba, 82 kilometers. We're finally within signposting distance of Toowoomba. Darwin is then 3,423 kilometers further along that road, in case you're interested. So this is a little bit easier for me, but still, I mean, a million of these in a row, we're starting to reach the limit, and it doesn't take too many more zeros before, forget it, you know, 10,000 kilometers is bigger than any continent on the planet Earth, uh, 100,000 kilometers is two and a half times around the Earth, a million kilometers is, forget it, you, I, I can't imagine a billion of these just stretching off into the distance. So, we've made it nine zeros on our way to 27 zeros. So we're going to use another method entirely, which I hope to give you some practice for now. But we all know the idea behind scale models. This is a little small model car, if you can't see from up the back there. Now, we all know the ideas of these. You just shrink everything down. So if you had a little model person next to this model car, it would be about that high or so. But that's getting smaller. We need to make things bigger. So let's get our imaginations out. And let's imagine that you are very, very tall. So tall, in fact, that you could reach down with your hand in the car park and pick up a car. Just the way that I am picking up this car. Now, take your time with this, I think, is, is the left. Really, really imagine yourself sort of looking down on houses, picking up cars. This, is, incidentally, is my car. You can throw it in the river for me. That would be quite handy. Um, <laughs> Are you getting the idea behind this? Now, if you wanted to, you could actually calculate how tall you would have to be before you could pick this car up like this. But pick a real car up as if it was that big in your hand. But that's not the point. Remember, numbers are going to let us down over this tour. So we're not going to use them. We just imagine yourself stomping around Cambridge, picking up cars. <laughs> Now, we need to get bigger quicker, so can you, can you imagine, if you're that big, take your time with this, the size of your house. So there's, there's that little car down on the ground there, and then there's the size of your house. Yes? Good. We're going to need to move things along a little bit quicker, though, because cars and houses, it's all a little bit slow. So we're going to make a step up. Remember, we're, we're going for the universe here. <coughs> We've really got to get moving. So we're going to go for Mount Everest. Okay, the tallest building in the UK is this building. Note, note the people down here. That's that's a person there. It's 50 stories tall. Okay. Imagine now that you are a giant who is so tall that not only can you pick up. Not, not, you, you, you couldn't only pick up cars, you could pick up the Canary Wharf Tower, there it is in the London skyline. You could pick up the Canary Wharf Tower in one hand. For those playing on at home, you're about two kilometres tall, but again, 
Numbers are going to let us down, so we're not going to bother. Yes? Now, again, take your time with this. You've got all of London beneath you, and you're two kilometres tall. You might as well have a look around. Uh, the London Eye uh, will be the size of your hand, roughly. Uh, probably you know, a large cookie size, maybe. Um, the gherkin, appropriately, is the size of a cucumber. <laughs> uh, but after a long day in London, you will obviously want to get home to your, your, whoop, your house in the mountains. Giants, of course, are living now. There's you. Now, bring the Canary Wharf Tower with you. You might as well take a souvenir. That's it there. Um, yeah? On this scale, that house is the size of Mount Everest. Are you starting to get a bit of a picture of what Mount uh, Everest is? <coughs> There's another way to get a, uh, an idea of the size of Mount Everest. This, this is Google Earth. Uh, it is a magnificent piece of software. Um, please, if you haven't downloaded this and had a go, it's fantastic fun. Um, on Google Earth, there is the Earth from space. Um, we can do this. So that's Mount Everest. Um, there is actually another way that you can get it, your, an idea of the size of Mount Everest, and that's by going there. I can highly recommend this. I was in Nepal at the start of this year, and uh, if you're in Pokhara in Nepal, you can go to the airport there and give a slightly crazy Russian man 150 uh, American dollars, in, uh, for that, you will get a really stupid looking suit. That's me on the left. I was in called, called Wingus, and on the right we have Dingus. Um, he will put you in the smallest powered aircraft known to man, the ultralight, and half an hour later, this. If, if you ever get the chance to do this, you really have to, to do this. It, it really is fantastic. So we have an idea of the size of Everest now. Let's 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 recap. We have so if if it helps, let me just do that. It might be easy to remember where you are on this. You are the person on the ground looking up at the Canary Wharf Tower, which is 15 stories tall. And if it helps, you might want to do this the other way. Instead of pretending to be the giant, just pretend that you're an ordinary person. And a giant hand comes from the sky and picks up the Canary Wharf Tower and takes it off to his house. If you can imagine that, you're doing very, very well. Now, what we're going to do next is... Uh, well, <laughs> let's not leave that photo off there. Um, we, we've got an idea of the size of Everest now. Let's, let's try and get an idea of the size of, of Earth. Um, so for this... Imagine that you have phenomenal paper mache skills. 